Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Well, we are in the fight. I tell you, first we got the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I, I tell you what, before I get started and just come hot loaded in here, I want to acknowledge all our folks that are in the house already and those that are joining the house. Thank you so kindly for being here at Politics and Right. We have a lot to go over today. I want to welcome Bridge MCP from Binghamton, New York, Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain, E2247 from all over. We have as well AVQ from Brooklyn, New York, as well as in the house we have, I'm scrolling down, uh, parvet, 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 parvet. a lot of folks haven't registered in the chat yet, but please do so I can call you. Lee Grant is in from Montgomery County. As, but anyhow, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. I have four videos for you. I actually have more, but it's only probably going to be able to fit four of them in. So that's the only ones that I queued up. What we got is a Supreme Court that is unhinged. There used to be a thing called precedent. What it meant is that if welcome aboard, Mike uh, Cisak from Missouri. There used to be a thing called precedent. And what it meant is that we fought in order to keep a consistent nation when other courts pass certain laws or affirm certain laws unless there is a vast change in society that makes it makes there be a solid reason for that law to change that change does not occur but when you have a minority that comes into power that says, I will change the laws the way we see fit. That creates an issue. You no longer have consistency. You no longer have continuity. And especially when done under minority rule. Welcome aboard, Stygen, Birkin Creek. Where are you from? Let me call you up. Especially when you're doing it with minority rule. What do I mean by that, first of all? Barrett, he, uh, he appointed Barrett, he appointed uh, Gusech, and he appointed Kavanaugh. A president that didn't get the majority of the population. Welcome about Paul Fleming from Cotton, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, Georgia, from uh, Springs, Georgia. Anyhow. This guy was elected in 2016 by a minority, a fluke in our constitution, made him president. And for that, he got to elect three Supreme Court justices. Powder, Powder, uh, Powder Springs, Georgia is where our good friend Paul Fleming is from. This president who has never garnered the majority of the American people has appointed three Supreme Court justices. And these Supreme Court justices have decided to go against the will of the vast amount of Americans who have lived under the precedent of Roe v. Wade, who have lived under the precedent of Chevron, who have lived under the precedent of a presidency that did not need a Supreme Court to say, if you go out there and kill somebody, but you do it while you're president and you say you're doing it under the auspices of your office, it gives you immunity. That's what we got. A rogue Supreme Court that has told the president he can become a murderer as long as he do it as president, that women have no rights that we, the men, control their bodies, and that, and that, when the Congress of the United States, which actually more closely represents the people, I didn't say fully, a little bit closer to representing the people, even though it's still partial, goes out there and tells those Congress people that when you write laws, if corporations don't like it, 
and you don't specifically say it, we are going to overthrow that particular ruling. This is what you get when your party becomes weak, when your party tries to straddle two fences, when your party says, you know what? We are going to live, the, we are going to bring a knife to a gunfight. You know what? Since we still want money from the corporatocracy, we are going to try to hold back a little bit. And the corporatocracy says, say, yeah, we'll hold on to you so that you can hold on to those progressive peons and those other people as we, with minority rule, run the country and slowly take it away from you. And by the time you realize you've been had, there's nothing. There's nothing. So people, you got another chance. You got a chance to put people into office that's going to fix that Supreme Court. You got to pass, you got to vote to make sure you put people into office that are going to ensure that these fascists don't take control. Before I get started, let me go ahead and read some of the stuff from Michael Rudden and others. Michael Rudden says, AP, Supreme Court makes it harder to change capital riot defendants with obstruction. Charge Trump faces the Supreme Court on Friday limited a federal obstruction law that has been used to change charge hundreds of capital hills. Let me tell you about that law. It, they, they, well, I, I, read that on your own because we have a lot to cover. Uh, the Guardian, terrified and dystopian, the dark realities of the Supreme Court homeless decision. I even I didn't mention that one, right? Now, if you don't have a home and you make your home on some public land or public street, they can just kick you out. Keep running. Keep running, baby. Keep running. Read it. He has the links to it. And the one from Scudders is just too long for today, Michael. Uh, the Daily Beast says Scudders justices are mad with power after Chevron reversal. The Chevron difference established the 40-year old precedent of giving deference to the expertise of federal agencies. I did a complete video on that from this morning. And what I'm going to go do right now, my brothers and sisters, is I'm going to put the video in, that I did at KPFT to explain uh, Chevron, uh, because I think it is apropos that people understand what Chevron is all about. So here is the the, the video link I was going to talk about it tomorrow. I may still do that. But there is where I talk about Chevron. Take a look at that. Oh, my God. I am going to lose all. Uh, let me see if I lost. I think I lost it, man. Uh, let, let's see. Ah, uh, man. I think I, I accidentally lost the um. I, I accidentally lost the chat, guys. I accidentally lost the chat. How did I do that? So all the chats, uh, I'm going to lose the chat. So bear with me as I see if I can recover somehow. I don't think I can, but I'll try. I've lost the actual data that you guys put in the chat. You know, my composite chat. So go ahead and repeat your posts, guys. I, I lost the chat. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry I lost the chat. Uh, I should have it in two places. I think from none, I better do that. Uh, because I hit, I, I accidentally hit the mouse and ha, ah, it went berserk on me. Uh, has 37K people are all saying forget corporate media st still with the non-corporate sites. I recommended you. I appreciate you. It's, it's important for us to go ahead and start uh looking into this okay let's see lee grant says take a lot of left-wing political violence in france we could see similar events here i don't think i don't think so and by the way let's be clear here the left way the right wing got their, the most votes 35 percent or 33 percent but the the left wings were right behind them 28 percent and other left-wing groups when you add them all up it supersedes the right wing Le Pen's party, the the um, what is it called? Uh, they give it a rally, something rally. Okay, it does. So don't worry about that. The people on the right would want you to believe that the whole country is going right. It's not. It's not going right. What happens is more people on the right are coalescing together as a block. All right, coalescing together as a block. 
All right, so let's see what else we got here. Got a lot of messages coming back again. Thank you guys for repopulating it. R-Y-U-P-R, welcome. Oh, I, you're, you're a bot. Uh, let's see what else. Deb Denny, thank you so kindly for being here. And May Wood, thank you for being here. I'm going to start with the first video. The first thing I want to do is a debunking, debunking video on the debate, something that Biden was supposed to do, something that I think, I'll be honest with you, I think Biden is incapable of doing at this point in time. I I'm getting upset more. I'll be honest with you guys. I am getting upset more so than I was right after the debate. And the reason why is when I'm hearing the sick of fancy from the Repub- from the Democratic establishment, not even Republican establishment, the sick of fancy that I'm hearing from the Republican, ex- the Democratic establishment is completely pissing me off and it should piss all of us off. I hate to use those words. Forgive me. But as I mentioned before, Republicans have given us a pathway for a landslide. And by doing the same stupidity that Democrats have always done, we are running the risk of taking this landslide from the municipalities all the way away. Because we have the inability to be tough minded and do things right. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm a little bit agitated today. Forgive me. I'm not always like this. Forgive me, but I am still staying positive, but forgive me. Here we go. What makes the debate so upsetting is the litany of lies that Donald Trump told were so easily and should be flowing off of the tongue of anybody that's running or or that 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 comes out there to challenge donald trump and that is what we wanted to see president biden do on thursday the litany of lies were easy to debunk and you didn't have to spend all of the times uh debunking them first of all his staff should have done the following Come out there and and whenever for the lies, I had a better employment. No, my employment was this. Your employment were, was in the in the doghouse. And folks, go to Joe Biden or go to this independent website and see that right now. www. And now let me tell you what I'm going to do going forward when it comes to crime rate. The migrant crime is skit. I tell you what. Before I go into this narrative, listen to how easily. All the lies of Donald Trump was debunked in under six minutes. These large lies debunked in under six minutes, something that Biden could do over and over and over again, especially in the format of this debate, should have been prepared to do it in this debate, not timidly, but forcefully. Check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. Let's start, Steve, with uh, Donald Trump's claim about Joe Biden's record on jobs. Take a look. The only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs, a bounce back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Steve Ratner, what's the reality? Uh, Donald Trump rather committed more than 30 uh, lies during the campaign fact check. I don't know how to Mm. fact check. I didn't sleep with a porn star. So we picked some other things to talk about. This is a good place to start, which is jobs. And so this notion that the only jobs Joe Biden created were so-called bounce back jobs is ridiculous. So let me show it to you as clearly as I know how to do. So here are the the job numbers uh, before the pandemic. We had over 150 million jobs. The pandemic hit, obviously, we lost a lot of jobs. We started coming back. And you can see that in June of 2022, so a year and a half into President Biden's term, we basically got back to the pre-pandemic level. So these are, you want to call these bounce back jobs, you can call these bounce back jobs. But here's what happened after June of 2022. We added 6.2 million jobs to this economy. And so these are jobs that were created Uh, unambiguously under Joe Biden's watch. And here's something even more interesting, which is the job creation of both President Biden and Donald Trump making the right adjustments for COVID. If you take out the impact of COVID, uh, Donald Trump uh, created 182,000 jobs a month on average. If you do the same thing for Biden, take out COVID, he uh, created 276,000 jobs 
per month, so way more jobs per month than Donald Trump created. And by the way, more than were created under President Clinton, President Obama, and so forth. It's one of the strongest job creation records wow. uh, in history. So there's also Trump's claim about the largest tax cut in history. Take a look at what he said. What we did was incredible. We re rebuilt the military. We got the largest tax cut in history, the largest regulation cut in history. The reason he's got jobs is because I cut the regulations that gave jobs, but he's putting a lot of those regulations back on. And Steve, what are the actual facts? Uh, the actual facts is that Joe Biden's, ta I mean, Donald Trump's tax cut, sorry, I keep confusing. Uh, Donald Trump's tax cut is nowhere near as large, the largest in history. And you can see here uh, some of the, lar the largest tax cuts in history, the famous Ronald Ra Reagan tax cut of 1981. President Obama had two tax cuts during his watch. This tax cut, which actually was passed in 64, we call it the Kennedy tax cut because he was trying for it. And here's uh, President Trump all the way down here, Donald Trump all the way down here with the TCJA at six tenths of a percent measured against GDP, which is the proper way to measure uh, to measure tax cuts. And then he talks about how he was ready to start paying down the debt. This is completely laughable. The deficit was actually going up even before COVID hit because of Donald Trump's mm -hmm. tax cut. And so when you put it all together, Donald Trump added $4.8 trillion of non-COVID, again, we're trying to adjust for COVID, $4.8 trillion of non-COVID debt uh, to, the, to our national debt. Joe Biden has added $2.2 .2 trillion of non-COVID debt to our national debt in roughly the same period of time. And so the, the, the deficit and debt record between these two guys is again, not even close. And one more thing, um, there were many, but we'll just do these. Donald Trump also had this to say about crime connected to immigration. Take a listen. He's the one that killed people with a bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. Uh, Steve, what's the reality about the rat's nest that we are living in? You know, Trump's ability to lie with a completely straight face and to say things that just are absolutely factually inaccurate without even blinking is quite amazing. So let's talk, with, talk about overall crime first. First of all, and I'm using violent crime here as a proxy, but you'd see similar things at other kinds of crime. First of all, crime really didn't even go down much under President Trump. It went down a little bit, it went up. You can say this was COVID, but basically no change in crime. Under President Biden, here's what's happened to violent crime. It's gone from 398 per 100,000 people, the rate of crime, down 26%. 294. This is an uh, extrapolation of what this year will look like if present trends continue. A huge drop in crime this year. And, and so the record on crime overall between these two guys, again, isn't even close. So he's talking also about migrant crime. Let's talk about migrant crime because this is something most people don't appreciate, which is that the rate of crime uh, committed by both legal Im immigrants and undocumented immigrants is actually lower than that of U.S. born citizens. So here is the crime rate for violent crime, a bit over 200 for U.S. born citizens. It drops down for legal immigrants. And if you're an undocumented immigrant, you actually have one of the lowest crime rates. And among the, the, the reason for that is not that surprising in a way. If you're an undoc undocumented immigrant and you don't want to get deported, you're, you're pretty unlikely to commit a crime because that's not going to lead to a great outcome for you. But in any event, you see the same trends in property crime and in drug violations. Immigrants who come here, whether they're documented or whether undocumented, commit crimes at a lower rate than native-born Americans. That has been studied many times. This is a Texas study. You can find it anywhere else in the data. Those are the facts. Now, you ask about uh, the crime rate. Migrant crime is so bad. Donald Trump, do remember that the crime rate went up during your administration, and it is way down comparatively in my administration. And then as well, the migrant crime that you talk about is much less than immigrant crime as well as 
the crimes of the United States citizens, which are the highest of them all. Please, let's be factual. Why don't you tell your people the truth, Donald Trump, when it comes to uh, I had the largest tax cut in American history. Biden could have said you did not. By the way, folks, go to www.xyz.com and see what the real numbers are. But let's just give you some perspective. Both Obama and Reagan had much bigger tax cuts relative to GDP than Donald Trump, bar none. Okay, let's go to uh, as far as inflation is concerned. Well, Mr. Trump, you are the ones who raised tariffs on China, which caused those particular products to increase in price. That's your doing, Mr. Trump. And likewise, Mr. Trump, you are the one who mismanaged COVID, which also instituted what we had as a supply chain problem because of the policies that you pass that allows all our jobs to go overseas, that allows all these other things to occur. So, I mean, there was so it was an effective uh, presidential candidate and a president that has the realms, that holds the reins of the country should be able to go out there one a mano, a mano, and slight this guy. And that's why they came into the debate fearing. They thought that's what they were going to get. And they knew they would have lost if we had a Kamala Harris or we had a, 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 a Gavin Newsom. They're doing it. I think we have to be very smart because, again, 51 million people. That was a huge loss. It doesn't matter what we do in these different campaign rallies going forward. Nobody's going to see that. Very few people are going to see that. Partisans see the rallies. Everybody was focused on that debate when we had 51 million people seeing 33% of the electorate. Unfortunately, I, I don't even think about a second debate because I can't see. And I'm, I, I, I am a supporter of my brother Biden because he saved this country. He passed great progressive policies, but it's always country first. Country first, the American people first. I don't see any possibility of a better debate. There is none. It's country first, absolutely country first. We have to use our heads. The only way you combat Donald Trump whenever you are mano a mano with him is to really hit him hard. Again, the facts are the facts are the facts. And I know there are sycophants who are going to look at the numbers and throw their hands up in the air and still vote for Donald Trump, vote for their own demise. I can't help them. I can just use what they have to say to tell the truth. But there are a lot of people out there who just don't know. Most Americans just don't know. Most Americans that think they are MAGA, when they find out the re- the truth, you would not imagine the 180. I've spoken to them. When they finally earn the trust in you and they say, oh, really? And then they finally go research on their own. They come back. Now, if you are some kind of a screwy person in your head that you show the numbers, you show that Donald Trump was a complete and utter failure. And you prove it like we just showed with the employment, with the inflation, with the uh, uh, crime rate, light, etc. Once you show that, if you still want to go ahead and believe your, your thing, you can live in your alternate state of reality. But I am talking to the people who are listening. I'm talking to the people who have a mind. I'm talking to the people who can say, oh, oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that. And I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to learn. That is what we're talking about. Now, uh, you know, uh, there's a sycophant out there, another one, Bergama, just to show you how how these people operate. Bergen is supposed to be Donald Trump's uh, running mate. You know, it looks like that's where they're coalescing on Bergam. And uh, r- what he did, well, I don't have to s- talk it up. I can just go ahead and let you have the video. Here we go. Governor of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, he is supposed to be Donald Trump's pick for vice president. Uh, that's what we think. Either him or a couple others are on the, uh, you know, may become that that person. But, I mean, uh, you know, there's this narrative out there. Biden, you know, Biden, the senile guy somehow is also a dictator. I don't know, but that's what they say, right? But anyhow, 
He's a dictator. Dalgum is uh, Bergam is suddenly in his state under the the net the, the boot is on the neck of North Dakota. And there we have Bergam is trying to fight Biden because he's a dictator. And Donald Trump is uh, is going to come into office and fight uh, because what has gone on under El Senor Biden is dictatorship. I, I, I love the way the host uh, did uh Kirsten handled this, right? And then his response made no sense, of course, because what he's trying to say pretty much is, well, I tell you what, listen to Bergam, listen to her pushback, listen to his response, and then we'll take it on the other side. Going into 2024, I think both parties are going to be very focused on it. And I think this is a, the idea that this is the, this is a threat to democracy. As a governor in North Dakota today, I've been living under what I call the Biden dictatorship because of all the rules and regulations. Now, thank goodness for this Supreme Court. Yeah. Uh, it came out on Friday with the with the Chevron ruling because maybe now we can put a stop to agencies actually creating laws that don't come let me, from Congress. Let me ask you about your comments about a dictatorship, and then I want to get back to this because you say he's a dictator for passing all these rules and regulations. Biden's passed 139 executive orders. Trump had passed 169 at this point, and Governor, you as governor have passed 164. Does that make you the dictator of North Dakota? I'm not trying to jam uh, rules and regulations down on our state. I'm yeah. most and most of President Trump's executive orders were trying to get rid of red tape. Yeah. Joe Biden's actually creating a bunch of new, effectively laws yeah. that are affecting our, our country. Now check this out, guys, and this is important, right? If you take a look at what he's saying, he's saying when we pass these uh, executive orders. We are doing, even though it's, it's, you know, we are solely taking responsibility for these executive orders away from our legislature in the case of Bergam, away from Congress in the case of President uh, Tr Trump, when President Trump was the president. They are saying when they do it, it's okay. And by the way, at this point in time under Trump, Trump had passed quite a bit more executive orders than Donald Trump. Who's the dictator again? And of course, Bergam passed more executive orders than both of them. So let's be clear here. When they try to put these things on, this is a pushback that an active Biden should be coming out there and saying, absolutely not. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. And be very loud, just like Bergam and Trump and all these other sycophants are loud. But people believe them because, again, they are, saying, they are lying with conviction. We are telling the truth timidly. That is why we need a fighter. That is why we need somebody that can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And I tell you something. You watch somebody like our vice president, uh, and you watch somebody like Newsom. I mean, those two have the wherewithal to go against and, and hit hard instead of a timid type of response when what people are looking for is somebody that's going to defend them. Especially, again, if you take a look at what's going on with the Supreme Court giving immunity to Donald Trump. Partial, they're going to say, but they have laid the groundwork that if officially killing you, he did on official, you know, under uh, uh, if, if, if he killed you. And then he finds some official way to say this was under my official duty. Immunity. Again, be careful what you vote for, because you may be voting for your own demise. In fact, that's exactly what many are doing, voting for their own demise. Check it out. Thank you very much for that uh, image that we got from Brother Rodnan. I think it's Rodnan that gave me that. Yep. Here we go. It's amazing. They want to call Biden a dictator for passing 41 uh, on an average of 41 executive orders per year. Trump is 55 executive orders per year, more than 30 percent more. Come on, man. The numbers. It, it's so funny that all it, when I talk about Republicans projecting, that's exactly what I mean. Anything that they accuse you of, in general, those are the things that they are doing or they want to do. Think about it. When it comes to accusing you of anything, it is something 
that they are actually doing. So look, let's be clear here. Let's be very clear here. Bruce Pollard is in the house from uh, Kingwood, Texas. Bruce, I started putting my uh, mock system up together of what I'm going to be doing in Baltimore next week. I'm going to call you over later this week so we can do one of the shows. Maybe we'll do it on maybe Friday. Uh, either yeah, either Friday or Wednesday. I'm not sure which one yet. So that we can go ahead and play this stuff out before I pack it all down and set it up. Uh, let's see. Theo, wow, we got two calls. Let's see. Okay. May I help you? You're calling politics and right. Hi, am Hello. I calling, calling Egberto Egber 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 Willis. Willis? Yes, you are. Would you like to make a comment, my friend? Oh, oh, Egberto. Egberto. It's yes. Roseanne. Roseanne. How are you doing, Roseanne? Roseanne? And, and I am a colleague. I am a colleague of Let me get rid of the echo. Hold one second, because level, we have a level. slight echo here. Let me get rid of the echo. Let me get rid of the echo. All right, I think I got rid of the echo. How are you doing, Roseanne? I'm good. Yes, you got rid of the echo. I'm a colleague of Patrick Lovells. Oh, great. Great. Love Patrick. Patrick is, is a star in my book who has really shown what a whole lot of crap went on with the banking system. Now, that banking system continues to fuel and reward the criminal element who give all those gifts to the Supreme Court. Yes, they do. Now, what we have to do, as you just mentioned, we cannot be timid. We have to fight because the people united can never be defeated. We have to unite for what we're calling the clean new deal. All you have to do, go to X, follow my colleague, Patrick Lovell, Patrick Lovell one on X, follow him share them, share the truth. You're telling the truth. We're telling the truth. We all keep sharing it. And we usher in the clean new deal. Now I'm going to end my call and I'm going to finish listening to you, my friend. You're wonderful. Keep it up. Thank you so kindly. Thank you so kindly. Anyway, folks, yes, I think another call was coming in at the same time. Feel free to give me a call back at uh, 281-823-7747. That is 281-823-7747. So anyway, as you see the link, uh, let's see, can someone post the link to the page that was just mentioned? That is our good friend, Patrick Lavelle. Let me go ahead and see if I can find it on Twitter for you. Uh, so I can put that link in there because not follow both Patrick and myself. Uh, let's go ahead and find it right now. Patrick, let, I'm going to put that on the screen before I play the next video, but I, I want to get the next video. All right, let's go. Hello, Theodore. How are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Um, Talk. so, uh, hold on. Let me turn off this, uh, thing. Hold on. Okay. Um, so I have a question. If we, um, how how could they even uh, get rid of Biden at this point? I mean, if Biden decided to leave, uh, wouldn't the wouldn't the Republicans put up a bunch of uh, lawsuits trying to? How can they do the that? Ballot? It's 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 constitutional. Okay, it's constitutional. Uh, the party decides who's going to be on the ballot. Now, right now, there are delegates that are as, the, the only way we get into trouble if well, somebody. At this point, yeah. Uh, well, um, I've been I've been reading a bunch of stuff about how the Republicans are going to run a bunch of lawsuits in the states, and I don't see how they could do it trying to hinder uh, them from changing the ballot. You know, saying okay, that, look, no, they, let me tell you, it's it. all Theodore. It's all scare tactics. Uh, the Democrats can. Ch it, it, it's early enough. Because our convention has not occurred yet. 
it is early enough. And I gave, I wrote an article yesterday. I probably need to write another one that shows the procedure for actually, uh, you know, what, what the, what based that based on constitutionality, I found an article earlier today because somebody else sent me an email after I wrote the, uh, the thing about, uh, praising Biden and asking that we, have all doors open for everything. The fact of the matter is this. I mean, I know it is painful. A lot of people think that it is would create chaos, chaos if we if if somehow Biden says, you know what, I'm going to pass this on to the VP. Uh, and I tell you something. I don't think it is at all uh, what people think. It's not 68. I also put, placed an article in my newsletter today, politicsunright.com slash newsletter, that goes to the Les, Les Leopold article on 68. 1968 looks nothing like what's occurring right now in 2024. So those people who think, oh, when you have a contested convention, I'm not even talking about a contested convention. I'm talking about everybody in the background right now coming up to a consensus. Well, it does seem like it does seem like the American people are really begging for it's not fair. It's not fair that uh, Biden is is carrying all this uh, this uh, weight of the of the inflation that was really caused by the COVID uh, because, you know, <laughs> but a lot of people. I blame him for the inflation, even though let me let me go and, ahead for the people. Uh, Theodore, can I interrupt you right there? I want sure. to tell you that on our sure. program, on our program, we def definitively point out there is absolute, there is no debate about this. Uh, our economic system is a fraud, and it's not Joe Biden that created uh, uh, inflation. Inflation was created entirely by corporate greed and corporate ineptitude. And I have written articles to well, justify every one of those statements. Go ahead. Well, I would, wouldn't say entirely. They, let's just say they took advantage of the shortages caused by, you know, they like nobody could go anywhere on uh, airplanes. So all of a sudden you had a shortage of, just for one, one example, just one example would be jet fuel. When mm -hmm. you cut, you know, jet travel by 60% for six months, nobody's making any jet fuel. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the uh, economy explodes. And yeah, so there was, there was a legitimate shortage, but I agree the corporate, let me, uh, um, the corporatocracy I, took advantage of it. Brother Theodore, but, I want uh, to, the, Brother Theodore, I need to interrupt you here, and I'll keep. You, I'll allow you to keep talking, but I need to interrupt you. We will not remove any blame at all from the corporatocracy. Let's explain. The corporatocracy is responsible for the supply chain problem. Uh, when they came with just-in-time inventory, what they did is they said, we will not maintain the inventory necessary to sustain whenever we have cataclysmic events, a pandemic, a hurricane, or whatever. That's not a government decision. That is a private sector decision. They also could have protected themselves, understanding that eventually people would start flying again and mitigate for that rea re realization. We have to stop feeling a pain that we need not feel. The corporatocracy first responsibility is to its shareholders and the profits of its of its uh, of its executives. Once you have that as your main concern, as a god of uh, capitalism, Milton Friedman puts it, once you are worried solely about that, then that is your first concern, not the comfort of the American people, not the applicable, not the pr appropriate pricing for the American people, but to ensure that the only people that always m succeed is our plutocracy. So I'm going to respectfully, and I say this very respectfully, tell you, inflation was caused 100% by the corporations, and I have a backing from a very important source, which is Dr. Economist Richard Wolf. Continue, my friend. Uh, well, anyway, so the argument against 
dropping Biden is that it would cause a bunch of chaos. Um, we're kind of in a rock and a hard space because they're, um, they're, he could come back, but he, he's got to play it perfect. And uh, uh, at this point, I guess either way, it's a gamble. I don't see it as a gamble at and, all. Uh, Let me tell I you why. Think, well, I think that, yeah. Let me tell you why. The, 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 the Democrats are demoralized because they love Biden, but they see Biden as somebody who dropped the ball. And it's, I mean, again, uh, 80, look, 81 year olds age differently. Look at, read my article for uh, my show this morning. Uh, uh, look at uh, Fauci. Look at uh, um, uh, Bernie Sanders and look at uh, Biden. You know what's true about that? They're all three of them are well, octogenarians. I think Biden. I think Biden is. I think Biden is doing a good job too. The problem was that just that one night, it it went into all the. Okay. I I um. I, I feel you. I look. I, I love Biden I myself. I love Biden. Okay. I am. I I, I am point, a Bernie guy that loves Biden. Leave, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. But I, yeah, but um any rate, I'm I we you know whenever I started talking with you I get off further afield. But the point is, wouldn't it be the the, the okay, so the upside is we I think the American people would love a younger candidate. They don't want Trump and unfortunately they don't want Bi Biden. And if we got somebody else, but um, the polls say that if we got that guy from California uh, or the the woman from um, the vice president, Michigan, uh, or well, yeah, maybe the vice president too. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about her. Yeah, and she would she would obviously be the one that could use all the money. Uh, she would probably get black women on her side. Um, I'm con I don't know. Uh, Let me tell you who she'll get on her side, sir. She wouldn't only get black women. You mm -hmm. know, people still think that the vast majority of Americans vote black or vote white or whatever. Uh, they vote right now. Well, as actually, I've noticed my experience it. has been that um, I was surprised when Hillary was running at how much uh, – anti-female uh headwinds i would run into exactly um, exactly exactly and what's going to happen if with harris is harris is not going to be running as a black woman harris is going to be running as a woman and that is going to cauterize all the women who are scared about their losing their birth control ivf and other things. It's just not, she's just not running. So that and isn't also there. She's half uh, Asian too. Yeah, exactly. Asian, and that might, uh, might bring a back the, uh, the, uh, the Arabic vote. And yet now, she can we still, have to stop being you know, scared. Say nice things about, huh? <laughs> yeah. Theodore, we just need to stop being scared well, and we need to go out there and, and do it. That's it. We need to well, stop being scared. I, way. We can win either yes. way. You right. Know. But anyway, I need to but, go to two more uh, videos, Theodore, and I really, really appreciate you calling in. Uh, we may disagree on inflation. OK, but well, ultimately, uh, thanks for thanks for call. Thanks for letting me uh, rant. Okay. Oh, this is your show, Bye. sir. This is your show as well, my brother. All right. Let, let's go with the other video that I need to play real quickly and then we'll we'll continue. So let's go ahead and do that right this minute. Remember how many times I said that. Republicans have laid the foundation for a Democratic landslide. Democrats right now are scared because uh, the president had a horrendous performance in the debate. And it is something we don't know that for him is actually recoverable. So we're scared. Democrats are scared. But you know what? The pathway is still there for a Democratic landslide from municipal to state, to federal. We hope Joe Biden take a full assessment of what's going on to decide what's best for the country. But I tell you what, forgetting about the top of the ticket, all the way down, 
everybody needs to be singing the same tones because listen, watch, watch this with uh, El Senor Doug, uh, Doug Burgum, who just changes their mind to support the policies of Donald Trump, policies that Americans don't want and policies that they know if, if they tell the truth about what the Supreme Court has allowed President, uh, what, what a, a new president, uh, 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 President Trump would do, uh, uh, policies that will allow the corporations to really screw every American citizen. All these things are laid out. The, the Chevron uh, movement, you can't express it as Chevron to people, but you can also show how it all ties in. That if these guys take power, the Supreme Court is there to allow them to screw you. Here's one more item with Bergam and his words catching up with him that he changed his core belief to that of the right wing uh, machine who is intent on really changing it all. Check this out. I want to play something that you said about abortion when you were running for governor in 2016. When you outlaw the ability to terminate pregnancies and make it illegal, it just makes it unsafe for some of the most vulnerable people in the world. Young women who are scared, who are afraid, who are in a spot, you know, that they don't want to be in. America was an unsafe place for women before Roe versus Wade. Just to put a fine point on what you said there, you said America was an unsafe place for women before Roe versus Wade. So by your own standard, Governor, is America unsafe for women as a result of Roe being overturned? No, it's not. And and of course, uh, this is uh, something that should have been returned to the states. So you've evolved in that and you're thinking in that because you said right there, it's uns- it was unsafe for women before Roe was in well, place. Let's be clear, that was, that was a comment from... Uh, over eight years ago, uh, and certainly I, I've evolved in that position, but part of it I've evolved is that I understand that it's important that <clears throat> what North Dakota as a very pro-life state, different than even our neighbor Minnesota, uh, the states are gonna be different. And I have been clear that I'm opposed to a federal abortion ban. Uh, I'm aligned with President Trump on that. And this is something that has to be left to the states. But I'm just to be very clear, how and what, what changed your mind? Why did you think it was unsafe before Roe v. Wade and why not now? Is it because you're looking to be the, the vice presidential nominee to Donald Trump. Not at all. I think uh, you, you know and everybody else knows that, that, that care has evolved during that period of time. And I think that we can accomplish both of those goals. We can make sure that we're protecting and honoring life, but making sure we're also uh, delivering against maternal care. And that's going to do handled best uh, at a state by state level. So, yes, he got caught right in many different things. All of these Republican sycophants are being caught as they are forced to follow the Project 2025 narrative. That 2025 narrative is that project that will take away women's rights, that will take away all the rights earned by all citizens, not just uh, what people like to call the minorities. Every citizen, your rights are on the table. The corporate state, the fascist state, is by definition Project 2025. And you put these guys in, that's what you got. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely, so we have one last video we have time for. It's a short one. Uh, Let's go ahead and play that and then we'll get back with you. Kristen Wilker had, uh, from Meet the Press, had a lot of ammunition for VP wannabe Doug Burgum from governor of North Dakota. This time it had to do with an interview that he did with Chuck Todd, where he talks about always telling the truth and believe in being truthful. Remember, this is the same guy who also told Chuck Todd that he would want to have nothing to do with Donald Trump because, you know, you, you lie with dogs, you sleep with fleas, right? Check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. 
Governor, let me just ask you about the debate and a little bit more of what we saw. By one count, Donald Trump made more than 30 false claims during that debate. I want to play something you told my colleague Chuck Todd on this broadcast last year. Take a look. You ever lied in politics? No. That you know of? You don't believe you've ever lied? No. You, you feel I, like I, you've I, always told the truth as you understood it? Yeah, absolutely. That's how I was raised and that's how I've gone forward. As someone who is on Donald Trump's shortlist to be his vice presidential nominee. Do you think he should stop saying things that are not true? I think that the, the whole manufactured thing this morning of that Donald Trump has said something that he hasn't said before. I mean, everything that he said on Thursday night, he's been saying before. I mean, so this isn't, but this, this, is isn't not this is not, this is not news. But this is not manufactured, Governor. I mean, just to say a few, he said that Democrats want to kill infants after birth. That's not true. He again lied about widespread fraud. Not true. He lied about its comments after Charlottesville. Should he be truthful with the American people if he wants to lead this country? Well, uh, especially given what you just said, that you never lie. That's your standard, Governor. Well, I think you, you bring up an important issue. So, yeah, I mean, here he is going out there and talking about truth, truth, truth. When asked about what about all those lies that Donald Trump take talks about? Do you feel comfortable about that? He refuses to answer. He changes the subject. He just shows the hypocrite. That he is. That's what we have with Trump's sycophants and with the Supreme Court giving these guys immunity. God help us if they ever get into power. They represent a clear and present danger. Anyway, folks, we are at the end of the program. We are at 55. Anybody wants to call in and say something quickly, give us a call, 713, or rather 281-823-7747. One more time, 281-823-7747. We have a bunch of listeners on on, uh, on Twitter. Please go ahead and go, uh, well, not as many as I thought, but anyhow, go ahead and um, uh, sign up at, you know, Go ahead and follow us if you're on Twitter. If you're on Twitter right now and you're streaming us, click on follow. Make sure that uh, the next time we're streaming, you get a little notification that we're streaming, which we stream twice a day on Twitter at least. Um, look, we are in some difficult times. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to read all your, your texts today, but I, I want to at least salute everybody that's here. So I want to say, let me go ahead and put what Bridge, Bridge wants something on the screen. So let me get it there real quickly. Uh, where is it? I'll put it on the screen real quickly for a bridge. Uh, here we go. 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 It's on the screen. It says Supreme Court of the United States, Donald Trump petitioner, uh, Justice Sotomayor with Justice Kagan. And I'm going to read the part she has in yellow because our constitution does not shield a former president from answering for critical criminal and treasonous acts. I dissent. Uh, and, and in the previous, she said nobody's above the law. Take it out. It's on the screen right now. Uh, let's see what else I need to say here. I want to welcome everybody that I didn't welcome before. I'll go ahead and read those notices a bit later. I'm a bit frazzled today because I had to put all these videos together. And at the same time, just watching the news and all the things occurring, I realize how much work we have to do. So here is my positive note for today. We don't need to be scared. We don't need to be afraid. What we need to do is talk to our brothers or sisters or families or friends or acquaintances and just tell them the truth. Let them know what's going on. Talk to them about uh, Chuck Pinacchio. Great to see you. I'll see you in Baltimore next week, Chuck Pinacchio. Let them know. Let them understand. Your, your rights are being will be taken away from you in, in for what again? For corporate royalty and for the royalty of the rich. And even those who are voting MAGA. They're voting for their demise. They just don't realize it because they are encroached in this white liberalism or this white sycophancy that they believe that somebody is coming to take what's theirs. The only people that have taken what's theirs has always been the plutocracy. And they don't see it. But you know what? I believe in having this one big family. When I talk about uniting the ghettos, the barrios, and Appalachia, 
all of us of America, the working class, the middle class, the poor. Because it's just that select few that's pilfering us all. And we have to get it. We got it to get it into the heads of enough people. So please, if you are just listening to us for the very first time, or have you listened to us several times and have yet to, let's say, support the program, I want to ask you kindly and respectfully to visit our, to become a paid subscriber of our newsletter that informs you of what's going on. You can go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter, politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. Become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. It's less than a coffee a month. Think about it. Less than a coffee. If you saw me in the streets, if you saw anybody here in the streets, you would say, hey, we can do a coffee to make sure that this kind of information stays available to us all, to make sure the truth can come to us all. Consider it. Consider becoming a paid subscriber. And if you prefer doing it in some other manner, consider doing the following. Become a patron. Politicsunright.com slash patron or uh, support and find all the ways to support us at politicsunright.com slash support. But again, become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. I think you'll find it quite informing and quite interesting. I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.